Hey guys, Ant here from Muff Squad, back here with another video. This is my round two of our Discord 2006 format tournament. I'm on the left here playing Arcanine EX again. I'm currently 01. This is a double elimination tournament. And my opponent on the right, Ray, is playing Bomtar. So uh, my round one, I actually lost to a Bomtar. So uh, playing the two bomb tires in this tournament back to back. And um, we're just setting up here going first. As you can see in my opening hand, I draw a mulligan. So uh, my opponent will be seeing an extra card on his setup. But uh, I misplayed in my in my first round match. Uh, I don't. I think this matchup's kind of tough just because the T-Tar, if they set up two of them, it just it, it's so easily just Oko's one shots my Arcanine EX. So I'm still trying to figure out different ways of playing it. Um, but I would imagine that the uh, Bomb Tar deck is favored. So um, the 2006 format rules a person going first does not draw a card. They're allowed to play trainers, but they cannot play supporter cards. They could attach an energy and they could also attack as well. So. We set up here. We see he's going first. I win the coin flip. I will be going first here. And we're going to go ahead and start things off here in just a minute. He grabs his mulligan. He's going to fl flip over a Holland's Voltorb. And I actually flip over a Holland's Voltorb as well, which is insane. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a dual ball. I get two heads. So I get to search my deferred. You flip two coins for each head. Get to search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it to your hand. So I'm just going to start setting up my pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and get Houndour and a Growlithe. Uh, those are the two guys I want pretty much in my in my board. Um, this is an Arcanine deck, so obviously Growlithe into Arcanine and then Houndoom into uh, Houndour into Houndoom because Houndoom has a, a Poke body that locks your opponent. They can't play trainer cards if I have less Pokemon in play. So I'll just put that on screen for you guys. Uh, it's called the Lonesome. So my opponent is going to go ahead and draw for turn. He benches the Pupitar. He's going to want to get things going on here to start setting up the Dark T-Tars. And he's going to go ahead and play Rockets Admin. Now Rockets Admin is N um, for more, more modern format. It's both players shuffle their hands into their deck and they draw up to the amount of prize cards they have remaining. So in this instance, we'll both we could both draw up till we have six cards because we both have six prizes. A little different from N, uh, where you can choose actually how many cards you want to draw up to. You don't have to draw the six, you can draw up to six. So in case a, a Rocket's Admin does force a deck out, you don't have to, you're not obligated to, to draw the full amount of cards. So a little drawback from that card as well. So my opponent is definitely gonna just wanna try getting energies in his discard pile. And then he's gonna want to try to uh, get evolve into an electrode and then he's going to want to use the extra energy bomb which says uh, you can pretty much kill the electrode I take two prizes and then you can take five energy cards from your discard pile and put it on your board any way you like so he just benches the magmar and he passes so um, that's the magmar so i'm gonna go ahead and draw for turn i attach to my growl evolve evolved into an arcanine ex I'll show you what arcanine does so arcanine is a very good attack i'm gonna go ahead and play swoop teleporter which can it's like a ninja boy where you can sw swap a basic on your board with a basic into your deck and you discard the basic that was on your originally on your board so i'm gonna go ahead and target the voltor discard it and turn it into a wishing star jirachi now wishing star jirachi it's kind of similar to the modern um, Stellar Wish Jirachi, where the Poke Power says you can look at the top five cards of your deck, take one, and put it to your hand. A little similar to the Wishing Star, but instead of a trainer card, you could take any card. It goes to sleep as well, like the uh, Stellar Wish Jirachi. So I'm going to go ahead, look at the top five. I'm going to take a card. You don't have to show your opponent what you're taking since it, um, it doesn't specify a trainer card. It just says any card, so you don't have to show them what you take. Uh, Stellar Wish, you do have to show your opponent because it specifically says to take a trainer card. So you have to prove that you took a trainer card. So I am asleep here. I'm um, just furthering my setup here. I'm going to go ahead and play a TV reporter. It says draw three cards and then discard a card after you draw. So I draw three and I'm going to go ahead and discard a curse stone here. 
and um, so not much going on I'm just setting up my board I don't want to get too many Pokemon out because I want the the lonesome pokey body from Houndoom to get into effect so my opponent can't play trainer card and then I'm just gonna go ahead and flip for sleep from the wishing wishing star and uh, I wake up and I end my turn Ray on my right here draws for turn again he's gonna want to try getting some energies in his discard and getting electrode online so he evolves the pubitar into dark uh larvitar into dark pubitar and eventually that will become a dark tyranitar but the uh, magma on his bench is also good as you can see the, the jump dump and draw attack for colorless you can discard up to two energy cards from your hand and draw two cards per energy so it's a good way to get energies in your discard and see cards as well so my opponent does play a Holland mentor here. Holland, the Holland supporters um, say you must discard a card in order to use them. So he's going to go ahead and discard a Soul Rock. And Holland mentor says you can search your deck for three basic Pokemon and put it to your hand. So again, he's just probably going to want to see some setup Pokemon here. He's probably going to want to get another Voltorb, possibly another Pupit uh, Larvitar, and something else. So let's see what he get grabs here. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I, I have to look this up, but I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you could evolve the Electrode EX and from a Holland Voltorb. And I see here my opponent has a Holland Voltorb, and I don't know if that is, if you could do that or not. I could be wrong. I have to look that up, but I mean, it's just like, again, right here, he was a really cool guy. He's telling me that he's really new into the 2006 format. So, you know, he doesn't really know either and i personally don't even know i've been playing this for about a year now and i honestly can't even tell you if that's legal or not but anyway it's it's, it's friendly games you know we're just trying to get some reps in old format so he does grab the uh, uh, a voltorb which is a right voltorb it's not a holland voltorb he grabs a delta the fire um larvitar here so now he has f five pokemon in place so now if I do get the Houndoom out, my the Lonesome Body does come into play and my opponent cannot play Trainer card. So I'm going to go ahead and draw for turn. He doesn't get an Energy Attachment down. Must be rough. I'm going to bench a Growlithe. I'm going to attach a Fire to the Growlithe. So I essentially want to set up two Arcanines here ready to go. I have time because as soon as I, take, excuse me, as soon as I take a prize, he's going to be able to... Uh, play from behind and that's what uh, Powtar wants to do. It wants to Activate like admin. It wants to activate pow hand extension all these cards. So uh, He's obviously gonna take a knockout on my Arcanine with a fully loaded um, Tyranitar so I want to get two going so at least if he knocks one out I have one ready to go to one shot the The dark Tyranitar so that's why I'm setting up another Growlithe here um, I definitely want to overrun and try getting the 20 damages onto the Larvitar or Pupitar because Dark Titar has 120 damage health, so I need to get that down. So I could, because uh, Flame Swirl does 100 damage, so I need to, I need to do the chip damage in order to one shot. So I do play the Curse Stone, and then I just pass. I flip Tails for sleep, but Curse Stone says put a counter on Pokemon with Pokemon powers between turns, kind of like a Shrine, but um. I'm doing that, so eventually this Jirachi will die, forcing him to take a prize. So that way, if I take a prize, I'm not—he's he, not behind. So in my head, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll sacrifice this Jirachi and force him to take a prize. But as you'll see, I kind of played it out where he would have taken the knockout going into his turn. So I want—I wanted it to come, set it up right where it, it would not get knocked out on my turn, but. I forget how it played out, but we'll see. So my opponent here plays a Holland Lass here. And Holland Lass, you discard a card, he discards a Lunatone, and you look at the the top remaining uh, the top cards of a, a remaining prize for both players. For this instance, we both have six prizes, so he looks at the top 12 and takes as many energy cards as he sees in those top 12 and put it to his hand. But unfortunately, he sees 12 cards here, and he only sees two energies off of that Holland Lass. That, that feels bad. This guy plays a lot of energies, and... I mean, only hitting 2 out of 12 is kind of really bad odds. So he does grab the Holland FF energy and a basic fire energy here. So I, I can see him at least trying to start setting up this Magmar here 
and just start using dump draw here. He needs to somehow, he has to pay to retreat, which sucks, so he can't do it this turn. But I would imagine he, we see an attachment on either the active or the Magmar. Yes, so he does attach the basic fire to the Magmar. And I think he's just going to go ahead and pass. So I take a, I take a damage counter because of Curse Stone. I'm going to do sleep check here. It's a heads. I wake up. I'm going to draw a card and begin my turn here. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and attach another fire to the uh, Growlithe. Evolve that to an Arcanine EX. So I've already got my two Arcanines kind of ready to go here. And I'm going to go ahead and use Wishing Star. Look at the top five. I'm going to take a card. Okay, I grab the card. And then a shuffle. And yeah, if I could just get... So I want to get the Lo the Houndoom's ability into play because that way when he I take a knockout, he can't pow hand extension and bring up something on my, my bench. So that's like a, a reason why I wanted to get the Houndoom out. So I do go ahead and finally get the Houndoom out. So he cannot play... He can't play trainer cards as of now because he has more Pokemon in play than me. So I just end my turn. I flip. I wake up. I take the counter. I'm currently at 3. I have 30 HP remaining. My opponent's going to draw for turn here. He did have that Holland energy in his hand. So I could see him retreating here, paying the retreat cost to manually retreat. And I'm not sure if he has other energies in his hand, but uh, he could dump and draw to see some extra cards and uh, more importantly, get those energies in his discard pile for the Electrode EX Pokemon power. So he's going to go ahead and play Holland Adventure, discarding a card. I believe it's a Magmar, and he gets to draw three cards. So maybe, let's see if he got some energy cards from that Holland Adventure. That'd be big if he did, because then he'd be able to use attach, retreat, and then use dump draw for either to see two or four cards. So, uh, we'll see here. Currently, he currently has zero energy in his discard pile. So, he's desperately looking to get that going here. Ray on our right here, just thinking about what to do. I think he... I definitely know, I know he definitely has one energy because he got it off of the last. He got the Holland FF energy in his hand. So yeah, he's going to go ahead and attach that Holland FF to the active. He's going to manually retreat, pay the one, finally getting energy in his discard. I mean, okay, so he is going to use dump and draw, discarding a special dark and a heal energy. And he's going to draw four cards here. And then he's just going to end his turn here. So I take a damage counter because of Curse Stone onto my Jirachi, and then I get to draw for turn. So as you can see, this Curse Stone is going to not work out in my favor because I go into five. Actually, it did work out. So maybe I just messed up here. Yeah, I did mess up. I thought it was going to... I don't know why I didn't want to do So I'm going to go ahead and Wishing Star, grab a card. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't do the math right. I should have let this thing die because as of, if I remember correctly, I bounced the stadium this turn because I didn't want him to take the knockout. Really bad play on my part. I don't know why I bounced the stadium. Let's see what I end up doing here though. Um, so I'm just thinking about it. like I'm anticipating him getting the electrode, getting the dark T tar and just blowing me up but like he doesn't even have energy well, he currently has now a dark a special dark and a holland ff so i do attach to one of my arcanines i'm gonna go ahead and play rockets admin we're both gonna shuffle up and draw six here um i don't know necessarily what i'm looking for here But I, I think I remember correctly, if I remember correct, I do bounce the stadium this turn, which I think was a very bad play on my part. I should have left it because I would take five going into his turn and then it would die coming into my turn. And that's exactly what I wanted, allowing me to be able to take a knockout and then being both tied up prizes. So right on cue, I do play a Battle Frontier, which is irrelevant in this matchup. It says uh, colorless, dark, and metal evolved Pokemon cannot use their Pokemon powers. So... It won't apply for either of us. So I play a war point. It's like escape rope. We both have to switch. And then I'm going to go ahead and use overrun here. 
Start chipping away at the at the dark pubitar on his bench. I'm going he promotes a a Holland the Holland's Voltorb. I'm gonna go with, with overrun. Overrun does 30 to the active and then 20 to one of your, your opponent's bench Pokemon. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 30 to the active and 20 to the dark pubitar. So um, I need to. I got the 20 damage on the Pupitar, so I could just flame swirl Dark Tutar when he comes online. So Ray's going to go ahead and draw for turn here. Uh, I mean, the war point was kind of good because it, again, he also has to ret pay to retreat. But then again, it hurts me as well because he's getting. He would be getting energies onto his into his discard pile as well. So he does evolve into the Dark Tutar. And that's pretty much the, the big attacker in his deck there. Um, that's the thing that uh, I'm scared of the most. So, as you can see, Bite Off for two darks and three colors does 70. And if the defending Pokemon is an EX Pokemon, does 50 more. So it does a 120. It's just going to one shot my 120 HP Arcanine. So, um,. This thing's very scary. It's very hard to deal with too, because 120 on a not two prizer is is very annoying, very hard to deal with in this format. So, not sure what Ray's thinking about here. He currently can't play trainer cards, and I think that's slowing him down a bit. So, um, I, I I could see him just attaching. An energy to to the T-Tar and just sacrificing this Hans Voltor because he does want me to go uh, ahead on prizes so uh, he really has nothing to worry about here so he's gonna go ahead and play a supporter here I think, that, I think that's a Hans mentor he's gonna discard a basic fire it is a Hans mentor he gets to search his deck for three basic Pokemon so not sure exactly what he's looking for off of this mentor uh, okay, I see a Wishing Star Jirachi, and I believe that's another Pupitar. I mean, uh, Larvitar, excuse me. So he's just thinning out, probably getting energies in his discard pile. Um, smart move. So I, I, I wonder if we will see an attachment here onto the Dark Titar. He needs to start getting this thing going. He doesn't really have many energies in the discard pile. He wants to see some scrambles in the discard as well. But, um, okay, he does attach. I believe that is a scramble energy onto the Dark Titar, which is a great card. Scramble energy says when you're behind on prizes, it's it counts as three energy cards, rainbow energies. So it could count as three dark energies, um, when you're behind on prizes, and when you're tied or ahead on prizes, it only counts as the colors. And I believe it can only be attached to uh, evolved Pokemon. So he does get the um, scramble on the Dark Titar and just passes. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce the stadium. I put a curse stone again. I'm going to go ahead and take the knockout and put the 20 onto the other Larvitar to set that up. So yeah, see now I screwed up because now the curse stone Oh no, the curse stone might might just work out again because I go to five now, and then the Jirachi will die coming back into my turn. So he does promote the Magmar again, and he we may see another dumb draw here before he can actually use the Electrode EX's crash uh, ability power power. And I would imagine he wants to get maximum value out of the Electro's Pokemon power. So he probably wants to start getting another T-Tar online. So he can at least get energies onto both of them and just solidify two attackers. And that'll just like crush me. So he, he's going to go ahead and play a Holland Transceiver. And Holland Transceiver says you can either target your deck or discard pile and look for a supporter card with Holland in it. Uh, he is allowed to play that now because we're, we both have four Pokemon in play. So the 
Houndoom's Pokey Body doesn't is not an infect anymore, so he's gonna go ahead and fail it. Just thin out these trainer cards from his hand and deck possibly. So I wonder if he has energies in hand. I wonder if he actually used dump and draw here or does he manually attach? Um he, So he's gonna go ahead and play the POW hand extension. I'll put that on screen there. Pow hand extension says uh, you could either, if you're behind on prize, you could either move an energy from the active to a bench, or you can switch a bench Pokemon with their opponent's active, like a Lysander or boss's order. So he does uh, move the energy from my active to Jirachi, and he's gonna go ahead and play Rockets Admin. I'm gonna shuffle up and draw five. He's gonna shuffle up and draw six. And this is a, that was a pretty good move because the Pow hand extension moved the energy to Jirachi, and the Jirachi will die this turn, losing me an energy uh, on the, my board so pretty good play here and he can play it now he might as well use the pow while he can play it before the uh, Houndoom's Pokey Body comes back into play so not bad I'm not sure I forget how many pow hand extensions a uh, pow tar usually plays but very punishing card especially from a deck that plays from behind because uh, the Electrode EX gives your opponent two prizes, so it kind of just forces them to go ahead on prizes and allowing you to just, like, do what you want to do. So, Ray's going to go ahead and attach a protective orb onto Dark Titar, which says uh, the Pokemon that this is attached to has no weakness. So, kind of irrelevant, but just wants to get rid of it. Uh, Dark Titar is weak to fighting, so um, kind of irrelevant, but I just want to get rid of it out of his hand and deck. And he's going to go ahead and play a Team Rockets Ball, and that allows you to search your deck for a Pokemon with Dark in its name. So he's going to go ahead and grab the Dark Pupitar and evolve that Larvitar into it. So now he's, you know, he's setting up two, trying to set up two T-Tars here. Probably just going to start getting more energies in his discard and, and waiting for that to use Electrode's Pokemon power to just ramp up as the, the maximum five energies from his discard onto his board. Specifically, probably onto two Dark T-Tars here. So I, I can't expect another dumb draw coming here. He doesn't have, he has nothing but time on his hands. Uh, he just wants to keep setting up. So let's see how many energies he does have and he's able to ditch. I think he's gonna attach an energy here for turn, which he hasn't already. I think he's just checking how many energies he has in his discard. I believe there's a special dark, a heal, two basic fires. So he does attach the scramble. Okay, that is a scramble. So. I believe the energy before and then he just dump draws a special dark to draw two so he's got two special darks in his discard he's got a scramble and I believe that's a I'm not sure a Holland energy so that that dark T-Tar currently has a scramble energy and a Holland FF on it and he, he's got four energies in his discard pile now he, he could or five he could start um, setting up properly if he could get that electrode into play so on my turn you know, he I killed the Drachi's dead so he does take it we're both fi uh, tied at five prizes here I attach to the active Arcanine and I'm gonna just overrun here. I'm gonna put 30 onto the active and I'm probably just gonna keep chipping away at these dark T-Tars. So I put 20 on the 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 bench dark pupitar. So that now it's currently at 40. So I started eyeing up. So I started seeing some um other routes I could take, strategies I could do. So this the deck that I'm playing actually plays one um ATM Rock, which uh, for a colorless, de-evolved all your opponent's Pokemon. And uh, so I was thinking maybe if I could get enough overruns down, I could kind of just de-evolve his T-Tars into Pupitars, and then that might just like crush him. So I was like, I might as well, while I can, instead of taking like the knockout here on this Magmar, I could just like start chipping it away, setting that up as well. So, um, I started eyeing that up. Not, I'm not sure if that was correct or not. But it felt good to me at the time. I don't think I, like, just just kill this thing and then go ahead on prizes and then allowing him to just scramble energy coming into play. So, um, yeah. Um, not sure what Ray's going to do here on his turn. He's going to go ahead and play a 
Professor Elm's trading method, allowing him to search his deck for an evolution Pokemon and put it to his hand. I would imagine he's going to get the Electrode here. Uh, he did evolve the Dark Titar into the... I mean, he did get another Dark Titar, so this is massive here. This is like exactly what this deck wants to do. He's going to pop this Electrode, set up two Titars, forcing me to go ahead on prizes, and now Scramble Energy's online. This Arcanine is probably going to just get bodied here. Um, so he's got the dream set up here. He's pretty much just setting up his board to just close out this game. Okay, I believe he has the five energies on in his discard pile as well. Even if he doesn't, he could just manually retreat this Magmar to get that energy into the discard pile as well. Just Ray over here just checking what energies he has available to him. I know there's two special darks which are very good to get. And he hasn't even attached for turn. But he may have a scramble in hand as well. So I think he's just thinking about how he wants to play this out. And where he's going to place the energies. Um... Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing... So he does attach a Scramble to the other Dark Titar, which is this is massive. I mean, he's got two Dark Titars with a Scramble on each of them. He's going to go ahead, pop the Electrode, using the extra Bomb Energy, forcing me to take two prizes. He's going to rain five Energy cards from his discard pile onto his board. And then he's just going to solidify two attackers here and just close things out here this is a huge play huge swing turn uh he's gonna go he's able now to knock out my arcanine ex forcing him to go to three prizes as well will be tied which is not bad because scramble is offline but this is where i a pivotal moment in the game came and i think looking back at it i made a bad play but i i don't know for sure i mean uh if i drew well it was probably correct but um so he's just deciding where he's placing his energy. He does place the two special darks on the other dark T-Tar. Now this other dark T-Tar. So he places a Han FF. And then he's probably just going to place uh, that one there as well. So that dark T-Tar currently has a scramble. The one with 40 damage has a scramble, two darks, a Han FF, and a Holland FF. He's going to go ahead and play... Target discard pile, use Holland Transceiver, get the Holland Adventure out for his following turn. Just sit on items while he can. Manually retreat. He's going to bring up the Dark T Tar that has 20 damage with the Scramble, Holland FF, and a Fire. And we'll most likely be seeing a bite off here for 120 damage which is a knockout oh he's actually going to use a pow hand extension and bring up the one with three energy and then bite off that going to three prizes and myself going to we're both at three prizes here so a very strong turn for ray here very strong turn setting up two big boys and i pretty much have just an Arcanine here that could just get one shot easily by... So even if I kill the active Arcanine, he can just kill me with the bench one. Leaving my board just completely useless and worthless. So this is where I was saying before, I kind of—I I don't know if I made the right play on this turn. So I didn't want to one shot. I, ha I, ha I can one shot this active T-Tar with Flame Score if I attach a fire. But I, don't, I didn't want to do that because then it activates scramble energy and he could just one shot me right so right now scrambles offline so on this active t-tar he doesn't have sufficient energies to use bite off so i was thinking if i could somehow find some pow hand extensions and like move some energies around and just keep overrunning and doing the the atm rock play as i was speaking before I might have a shot because as of right now, he can't play item cards. So I might just want to bring up 
like the or move start moving energies around and and try to just keep overrunning here so i do bench a growlith which now i he now again he has access to items again i'm gonna go ahead and play the rockets admin we're both gonna shuffle up and draw three and this was the beginning of my demise here uh, i mean the odds were probably heavily against me anyway because of his board state but i remember like i drew nothing off of this admin here and i was just kind of dead drawing so again ray is in a very strong position because that bench uh dark t-tar has five energies on it, it has two darks and three colorless so he could just manually retreat this active and just one shot my arcanine so either way but i was thinking about you know what if he wants to do that he has to burn two energies on this active t-tar and that's exactly what I want to do. So if he burns a two on the active, brings that clean one up, then if I find pals, I could just start palling away those special darks on the bench one and then setting up the over one because then Scramble's not live and he doesn't have the dark, so he can't use bite off. So I go ahead and use overrun, putting 50 on the active, and now the bench one has 60. So getting closer to, I, I would need 80 damage on both of these to, in order to use the 18 rock. So one more overrun would do it. So if I could just somehow find some pal hand extensions, get an energy and Arcanine on my next turn, we'd be in business here. So like I said, he and if he wants to take this knockout on this active Arcanine, he has to manually retreat, taking two energies away from the active, bringing up the, the bench one, and then I'd have to start finding some pals to start powing away those special darks on the bench one. So this was the line of play I saw. I felt like this was safer instead of just me O-calling this, giving him access to scramble energy again, not having a backup attacker. This play also allowed me to bench a Growlithe and attach an energy there as well. So I'm definitely going for the ATM rock play here. And let's see if it pays off. So Ray is thinking about it. I think, again, only way he has Oko is if he pays a two retreat cost from the active and attacks with the bench when he uses bite off. So... Most likely, that's what we will be. This this active T-Tar only has three colorless on it, so he can only use grind for 40 damage as of right now on this active. So I mean, that wouldn't really do much. So he does play a, a swoop teleporter here. He's gonna probably target the Magmar and turn it into something else. That Magmar, I believe, has 30 damage on it as well. He's gonna go ahead and fail it. And just get while he could play items, you know, just get rid of it. He does it late game. He doesn't want to admin into those when I admin him to possibly one. So just getting rid of it. Very smart. Just getting rid of those cards. And more than likely, we'll be seeing a retreat, a manual retreat here, and a bite off knockout with the bench Dar Titar. And Ray just still thinking about what's his best line of play here. And he is eyeing up which energies to retreat, probably. Counting up, making sure he has enough energies to use Bite Off with the bench. That is a colorless energy. He's reading the text, making sure that it does count as a colorless energy. So it does have two colorless, uh, three colorless on the bench and two basic dark, two special darks. So just eyeing up which energies he wants to get rid of from the active. He's going to go ahead, discard the Scramble, and discard the FF, leaving the basic fire. Promoting the, this one that currently has 60 HP and bite off does 140 damage Completely obliterating my Arcanine And putting himself to just one prize card away from winning this game and So like I said, this is the turn why I play four pound hand extensions I, I believe I haven't played I played zero at this point so if I could find two of them right now or even one I'd be in business like one in an admin if I could find Pal, Energy, Arcanine, I mean, I'm asking for a lot, but hey, you never know. One Pal could be great. Even a Pal hand extension and a Fire Energy could be good. So I'm going to play Dual Ball. I get one heads. I get to search my deck for a basic Pokemon. I need cards here. I'm most likely probably going to play, get the... Um, 
the snappy, uh, the APOM that has snappy move. And snappy move says if, if APOM's on your bench, you could actually use the power, send it, put it in the bottom of your deck, and then draw a card. So it just, it just gives a dual ball, and now it's just drawing a card. So I need cards here. I'm digging for power hand extensions. I'm digging for energy. I'm digging for admin. I'm digging for Arcanine. I need a lot of pieces here. But if I could find this, these, this combo here, I'm I, one overrun here without dying could possibly win me this game. So I do get the APOM. I'm going to go ahead, bench it. I play a TV reporter. I'm going to draw three. I, again, I need to see cards. I have to discard a card. I end up discarding. I forget what I discard here. I think I'm going to discard a Growlithe here. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think it matters what I discard. Oh, so I'm debating the Growlithe because I do have a, a swoop teleporter. And I could have turned, like, just thin out. So I do got the Apom. I'm going to snap a move. Draw a card. Hopefully it's a piece I need. It's looking rough. I mean, worst case scenario, the Growlithe has Body Slam for one color, so it does 10 damage, and I could paralyze. So again, that could also buy me a turn if I hit heads as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and play another dual ball. Just, just trying to thin out. I get one heads. I think I'm just gonna try getting a Pokemon out of the deck in order for me to swoop and just thin out cards. I'm just trying to see. So I do grab a Lapras here, which has um, st Navig, st I believe it's called Support Navigation or Stellar Navigation. It's pretty much uh, top of Lele GX's Wonder Tag and Jirachi EX's ab a Pokemon ability where uh, when you play it, put it into play, you can search your deck for a supporter card. Um, so, you know, I could just play that. I'm going to attach a fire to the active. I'm going to go ahead. I probably will play the Lapras just to thin out as well. I probably grab an admin off of the Lapras as well. So it's not looking so good for me here. I definitely whipped the pieces. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just body slam. And if it's tails, I lose. If it's heads, I might have a shot. It's tails. So I'm just doing 10 damage. And then he could just go ahead and just attach. Fight off. Oh, and then Ray shows me he had the heal energy. So even if I paralyze him, he just attaches that. He has the paralysis and sucks to knock out anyway. So I would have lost that anyway. I'm just showing right here. Like I had three pals in deck. I, I was looking for those to do some disruption. I was letting him know if I could get, the, if I could have found those, moved those dark energies and kept the overruns going, I might have had a shot. But Ray played it very well here. He's going to go ahead and go 1 1 advancing in the tournament. I'm eliminated. But, um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, if you guys want to see certain matchups, uh, please comment below, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and like the video, and uh, please check out our Discord. I, I'm going to post a link to our Discord. Please join if you guys are into old formats. Uh, we usually run several different formats, and we've been running successful tournaments, giving out prizes as well for free, free tournament. So please uh, join, and uh, stop on and say hi, and thanks for watching, guys, and hope you enjoyed, and take care.